Hey guys, and welcome back to another Create Astral video. I'm Chosen Architect, and uh, I hope you guys are ready. Now, starting off today, there's a few things I want to cover that uh, uh, we, uh, we went over last episode, um, and that was kind of a fix here. I need to go over a fix here. Uh, so this belt, uh, because I had a trapdoor here, it, when this filled up the millstone, it would just jam the whole line. So I have a cactus down here now, and so when it is full, it just flings the item over here, which actually works out a lot better. But everything's working pretty good. Uh, we got a bunch of clay balls now and, and things are looking pretty good. Today, I want to set up a tree farm, or at least try. That's one part of what I want to do today. And to do that, we are going to be jumping into a new section and we need to make some rubber hands. Rubber hands is andesite alloy um, and some good stuff. And then also we're gonna be getting into this, uh, which is making sandpaper. Um, I'm hoping sandpaper is pretty easy to make. So sandpaper, we just need some quartz. Thankfully, I do have a little bit of quartz, but we actually might want to start our process of kind of making a cobblestone generator that's down underground. Uh, so that way we can start building up those resources to be able to get more quartz for later on. Not necessarily fully automate it, but at least get it started. So that is the plans for today. Now, to get started with a tree farm, it's actually not going to be too difficult. Like I said, we just need the rubber hand and we need to actually make the main deployer itself. So if we add that there, we can see we have andesite casings that we need, we already have, and then the polish. So to make polished, uh, let's go ahead and grab some of our redstone. Um, and then to make the casings, we're gonna need some more uh, andesite uh, alloy. Thankfully though, there is a quest and we now have triple compressed andesite, which means we can make a farm that literally just gives us 100% andesite, which is nice. Now this quest grants us eight blocks of alloy blocks, which is so nice to be able to get. What a fantastic reward, because each one of these costs us a bunch of clay, like a lot of clay. Ah, by the way, I want to see what this guy's offering. Maybe there's something good. Uh, nope, nope, nothing, nothing good. You know what? Get wrecked. Now over here, I have some quartz that uh, we got from crushing down uh, the excess diorite that I had from our mining sessions. And so this is pretty handy. Um, and I believe uh, to make the sandpaper, which is just about everything we have over here, uh, we just need a little bit of sand. Uh, unfortunately, yeah, we have, oh good, we have some. I was gonna say, I, I think I used it all for making glass, but this makes sandpaper. Now we are gonna need a little bit more than I expect out of this. Yeah, we're gonna need a few of these um, to grind all this up. And then let's go ahead and get some of that rose in here. Later on, we can automate this. But we get to munch away. So we put this in the offhand, put them together, and there we go. We get pink diamonds. Yep, yep, yep. And uh, yeah, it looks way better in, in, in first person than third person, trust me. Uh, but there we go. So we have some of these for later on. Uh, now, I think four deployers worth is not that bad uh, and should be able to automate a simple tree farm for us. Uh, nothing crazy, probably just use a regular oak because that's probably one of the easiest ones to set up. And uh, yeah, with it being only four, that means we get to use less resources and uh, it still should be pretty fast. So I think right about here is where I want to get this started. Now we have the saw and we have ourselves a mechanical bearing. This is how we're going to rotate everything. And then down below is where I actually want the mechanical bearing to be. So that way we can use redstone on it to toggle it on and off. So if I go in and place this, bam, it's ready to go. Uh, now on the sides, it does have some configs that you can mess with. Uh, so you can see right here, uh, movement always, or we can say only place. And there's a couple of different things that you can toggle over here. But the main thing we're worried about is just connecting blocks. Now, right away, we can connect this and this will get to spinning automatically. So this block is connected to, uh, to it via glue, which is kind of cool, but we can glue other things to this. For example, I'm going to need to set this aside and we are going to have the mechanical saws go over here. Now I am going to need to glue this block to this block, just like that. So these two are connected. Um, and then we're going to have some saws and depending on the rotation, I think if, I think we're going to have this spinning in this direction. So I'm going to place the saws right here, all beside each other. 
And let's see, that might come into this area, but that should be fine. But what we can do is click this and glue all of these together. And so now this is connected to that shaft. Now on this level, to be able to get the items out of this contraption, which this is going to be a contraption, I'm going to go ahead and place myself a portable storage interface above this saw. That's gonna work out just fine. Uh, and I'm going to need a storage of some sort. So just for right now, I can go ahead and place a barrel here as well. And then I can go ahead and feed this back into this. Just using some logs is just fine. Um, up here, however, I'm gonna extend this one more, still using logs. And this is where we're going to place our deployers. I'm pretty sure the deployers need to be placed here on the back side. Um, and these are going to place saplings back after this is done. Uh, so this should work out pretty well. And all we have to do now is this is connected here. We should be able to just connect everything that's connected here to itself. But these are going to have to be connected uh, a little bit differently, actually. Let's go ahead and punch that and uh, make sure that's connected. We want this to be connected over here. Now, be careful in how you connect things. If you leave an empty gap, if there's ever uh, something that goes between here and here and goes into this spot, when you turn this on, it will pick up any block that is here by chance. Um, so you don't want to do that. And to get rid of a section like this, you punch to remove. So this is a nice little spinny contraption. So let's go ahead and remove this real quick. And this should work. All you have to do is just provide it some saplings into this barrel and it's ready to go. Now to connect into this interface, it's sort of the, the way you're supposed to do it is you leave a, a block gap and make sure it's facing here. And now every time this contraption crosses its path, it's going to stop and try to deposit items. Now, the way this works is uh, it's going to have to be pulled out. So if you have to use some sort of funnel or some sort of device to pull these items out. Now to power this, I'm gonna use this very simple setup that we've used over and over again, of course, with water wheels. Um, if I can get it to place correctly, there we go. And we'll place the water in just like that. Get that nice and spinning like it's supposed to. And uh, let's get our shaft real quick like that and connect that in. Okay, so uh, things are moving. <laughs> and it's actually kind of crazy. The shadows move with it, which is very, very cool. Now, currently it has no sapling, so we want a way to turn this on and off. Uh, so we are gonna need some sticks and we're gonna need some cobble. Man, I can't wait till we have some sort of storage system. I, but I think that's super late game. I, I, I still feel like the storage should be a lot more accessible early on. All right, so we can turn it off. Or we're supposed to be able to turn it off with a lever. Okay, ignore me. I'm a goofball. I had to make a clutch real quick. The clutch is how we're going to turn this off and on. Uh, so we have to be able to turn the rotation. And to do that, yes, we use a clutch and then that stops the rotation. And now we can access this. Um, and so what we're going to put in here is some saplings. And so put the saplings in, close this up, and then activate... And as you can see, it placed all of the saplings and we just kind of have to wait for a tree to grow. Um, and once uh, once a tree grows, we should be golden. I'm gonna go ahead and decorate around this um, using some of that andesite that we got. Now, once the items are, uh, are produced, we wanna definitely make sure to get them transferred over. So we can just use a hopper right here, very simply. And as you can see, drive-by exchange uh, is now complete. So do I have some bone mill so I can just, you know, grow one of these trees quickly? I think that's a, a good thing to do. It should have some bone mill yep, right in here. This is sort of sort of demonstrate this will grow on its own, but there's a tree. And did it already chop down something? It is not running, which is kind of concerning. <laughs> oh, there's a there's a villager in here in the does the villager stop the whole setup. No way. Let's pause and redo. I have no idea what caused it to stop there. Okay, so first problem encountered. First problem encountered. Notice this place blocks. We do not want it to do that. So we are going to have to go in here and tell each one of these to only hold saplings. 
That is very important, and I almost skipped that step. Uh, so let's, let's take the blocks out of your hand. You are dangerous with blocks at the moment. But it does show that this can also place blocks. So I have I have noticed a weird bug that I don't think I've ever experienced before because this normally would work. Uh, the hopper, for some reason, is forcing the portable storage interface to automatically extend and forever stay extended and act as if there's constantly items going in, as you can see here, um, which is not true. But it doesn't do this with a shoot. Um, so I'm guessing this is kind of forcing me to not use hoppers. As much as I love hoppers, I'm going to have to figure out another solution to this. And so in this case, I'm just going to lower everything for right now and just have that shoot, up, you know, serve the items. That's just what's going to have to happen. For some odd reason, hoppers are just being janky. So remember earlier how I said I wanted to get a, uh, an andesite and granite generator going? Well, this is where we're going to start working on that. Uh, so we need to go all the way down to bedrock and we need to create a cobble gin down at bedrock level, um, which sounds easy in concept, but getting down there and getting back and forth is going to be kind of a pain. So I decided to just go ahead and bite the bullet and I made nine mechanical drills. Uh, we'll probably end up using these later on anyways. But what I need to do is place them all down facing the ground and we're going to make ourselves a bore that is going to bore down into the ground. And uh, we should be able to handle all of this just by gluing it together. So if I glue this all together here and I attach a rope, I don't know if I need to attach it directly to a block, but if I attach it here and then I use a hand crank, I'm hoping that I could lower it down and mine a tunnel all the way underground. Of course, I'm not gonna do it by hand. I need to set up a water wheel uh, right over here and then just route the power from the water wheel over to this. So that way it just, while I'm just sitting here, digs me a giant hole. It's pretty darn cool. So the rope stopped spinning. Everything looks pretty good. I'm gonna use this to get some ladders down here and uh, take the water all the way down, take the ladders all the way down. And uh, we should be able to use this as a means of getting back and forth for now. An elevator would definitely be the way to do it later on. Um, but I think this will be pretty good. Hopefully we don't encounter any problems along the way. So right here we need to generate some cobble. So uh, I think a water source is going to go right here and drain. Um, I'm just going to use this method for right now. This will not really be seen. Uh, so we'll have the water drain over here. And then we just need to get the lava trapped in. Very, very simple. We'll use our drill and everything. And then down here, thankfully we have enough space. We can use a conveyor belt and set up similar, a uh, very similar setup to the one that we've used before. So there we go. So this should generate stone and it should also generate andesite or not andesite. It should generate granite and, uh, well, it's supposed to, I thought generate granite and diorite? I think maybe I'm doing this wrong. Maybe because it, according to this, it says flowing lava connected to water. So basically the opposite of what we have going on. Uh, so lava flowing here and water here. And this. Yeah, that's not what I was expecting. Um, oddly enough, that produced cobble deep slate but it's, it's happening over air. Now this setup might actually work. Uh, so if I place the lava here, right? And it's flowing and then the water source is here, then it should work. Um, that is something I'm not quite sure of. Uh, let's see if we can't do this fast enough. <laughs> Maybe I place the lava in real quick. And then hurry up and place the water, which should land right here. Actually, we can place a block here, potentially. Ah, that leads into another problem, though. Like, this is going to have to be blocked up on the sides in order for this to work. And then it can flow over here as well, thus flowing into our, our water. So we're going to have to cap off our water to make sure lava doesn't flow into it. Oof, man, so many odd things. 
I really wish we just had cobblestone generator machines, just single blocks, because doing this repetitively gets kind of old, honestly. Okay, so let's see. Up here, we just need to place in our lava. And will that work? Uh, only one way to find out, right? We just need to break this trap door and, and see. And it makes stone. I mean, we literally just made a stone generator. I am not... Okay, there's andesite. But it's not supposed to do produce andesite. It says right here, flowing lava touching water over a piece of bedrock will work like the double compressed andesite base generator, uh, but will have a very low chance of producing andesite. I mean, okay, so after testing this out, it does work, uh, as you can see right here. Okay, whew. Uh, but it has to be flowing. So I have the water flowing here, uh, and this is flowing as well, and thus creating this. So you, I had to move this back one. It may have worked in the pre prior uh, setup, uh, but I'm gonna, I'm think I'm gonna stick with this particular setup here, just because I know this is now working. <laughs> now, as far as setting it up, I'm gonna use the same setup I did before. Uh, I did see some people talk about using pistons, but the only problem with using pistons right now is I just don't want to do the redstone uh, work that you'd have to do, and the sequential uh, shifter um, we can't make yet. So I'm just gonna stick with powering this with a water wheel. And, uh, and going about my business with this particular setup. I think that'll work pretty good. Just make sure we are safe here. And uh, now, I will need a conveyor belt down here. And then I'm going to use some drawers to filter everything out. And then the residual cobblestone that this generates is just going to get tossed for now. So, here we go. So, this should work. Uh, and like I said, it, it, it's not going to be the fastest thing in the world. These need to be locked. I do have them filtered up and I'm tossing cobblestone with the hopes to only collect the resources that are in here. These two resources right here. It's a simple setup. I have a water wheel over here powering the belt and then I have that same water wheel back here that is just running these gear boxes and powering this setup. But yeah, the, I'm hoping <laughs> this maintains everything. I don't think any of these things can catch on fire with the lava here. So now that we have that running, let's start focusing on infinite fuel. That's right, infinite coal. We should be able to do now that we have our tree farm running. Now, this may be a little bit uh, more complicated if you were to go about it with just the means of using create, um, but we should be able to fuel this with itself without even needing lava or anything nearby. And the way I'm gonna do that is using crude storage units as well, we're going to be using them as a means of item transfer yet again. So if I place this here uh, and we specify down here that we're only going to be. Oh, by the way, we have to, I guess, you know what? We should probably move this back one and have it pull from the back so that way we can still access the chest for everything else. Uh, so let's put this into the front. Let's put it right here for right now or on, onto the side. Actually, let's put it right here. Um, so we're going to have this automatically pull, but we're going to specify specifically what to pull out. Thankfully, we can filter yet again. Uh, so in here, we put it in and we make sure to lock this one specifically. The other ones we really don't have to worry about. Uh, but we are going to have our furnace and we can go ahead and place one right here and place the furnace on top of that. So this is going to be where all of our stuff ends up collecting, uh, such as our charcoal that we're going to get from this. But how we're going to actually manage to get the items routed around is going to be using a setup like this. So I have to go in and tell all of these, for example, this to pull. So that should be pretty easy. We set the left auto, make sure to control O to get rid of that. And we're going to set this to up. Or actually, the input does not need to be up. Uh, so the in, actually, I guess it doesn't really matter, right? This is all one configuration. So there we go, we have our input, everything's set up. And so that should be pulling out of here and going into this once we have this set up to auto accept. Uh, and then we'll have that pull from the bottom and send to the top. So what we should have, oh, maybe the out is its own, its own setup. Interesting that there's like an output here. So yes, this does have its own configuration. So we need to make sure that is outputting and that should go in here. So things are going to get a little bit a little bit complicated. Let's go ahead and clear that out. 
Uh, but in reality, I mean, this is uh, this is very very simple to to set up. Um, so we just we need, we just need to make sure that we get everything correct here. Uh, so the out, which is what we're working with, out needs to send up here in auto. And so that should start to fill in this one on the in. We have that insert. And then on the out, get again, we need the out on this top, this unit right here. <laughs> We've got to take this. Uh, we have the in set up. We have the out. It needs to go up here and extract. Okay, so, okay, so we're, we've messed up something. So down here, for some reason, logs did not stay locked. Um, so let's get all of the saplings out of here, actually. So all of the saplings, you guys can just stay on the ground over here for right now. For some reason, the, it, it remained unlocked. And I can't, I can't click these in fast enough. I've got to, I've got to turn this, turn this, uh, auto input off for right now. Okay, let's pull all these out again. Goodness, goodness, goodness. I thought I locked it. Uh, so we need to put this in, uh, and we need to turn this one back off. Okay, I think I have it fixed now. Okay, I can turn the output back on, and now it's, it's maintaining. Okay, it's not, it shouldn't pull anything else. Ah, I just got to turn everything back on. I thought I had clicked the lock button. Okay, so as you can see, the amount is filling up in here. Um, and then we need to tell this again to automatically pull out. Now, is it going to stop the filter? It doesn't seem like it. Okay, so we're good. We're good. We're good there. Now we just need to make sure all of these are set to properly function. As you can see, that is now working. We have in and then on this, we have out. All of this in the name of coal. Uh, all this to save a little bit of automation, I guess. In. And then, actually on this one, we're going to be outputting to the side over here. Right? To here. And then this needs to input. And then the output needs to be the bottom. Um, and then also on this middle one, we need the output to also go here. So this should fill up the bottom first, or the side first, which will provide fuel. And we should, if this all works out, this should fill the furnace. Uh, let's make sure that auto output is enabled. And it is. And it went in. And let's throw in our wood. And the side input should be able to output to the side. However, it is not for some reason. Ah, so this is where I guess this setup has its limitations. Um, so at the moment, uh, in, unless we had this completely maxed out with wood, uh, this will not work. So I think what we have to do is use the the crude versions, uh, the even smaller ones, the ones that only hold one item, and use these as only the one item ones. So now if you're doing the same configuration except for these right here, are uh, set up to only hold one, but of course they hold a actual buffer uh, in here of a single stack as well. Um, these are now working, and as you can see, we have 64 and 64. All we have to do now is tell this to pull from the top. And as you can see, it is now filled up, and we have charcoal. Ha! <laughs> ah, what a setup. What a setup. And all of this is, uh, this is actually pretty compact using the storage buffers uh, to move the items around. So guys, it's again that time. Time to click that subscribe button if you haven't already and give this video a huge thumbs up. Also comment something down below if you did enjoy today's video. Of course, it's time to wrap things up. I hope you enjoyed and of course, guys, it is time to thank the supporter of today's video. And that, my friends, is going to be a huge thanks going to Bum Touch. Thank you so much for your amazing support over on the Discord. Becoming a Discord premium member and supporting me in one of the best ways possible. Guys, I thank you so very much. Like I said, leave a comment down below if there was something I did that uh, there's a better way to do. Because I'm sure almost all of these structures, I'm going to have to rebuild at some point and make them even more mega. Because it seems like that's where this pack is going. So guys, I hope you enjoyed again. I, I know I keep saying that. Thank you so much. Much. I'll see you in the next one. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.